Okay. It's getting pretty close to the end of the game. I'm sitting at four damage, and I've got a 13,000 attack. Bowing Saber Dragon Reverse. My opponent is coming at me. And let's see. Hmm. I am sitting at four damage though. I I'm gonna no guard this. So let's see what happens from my opponent's end. Okay. He's gonna do a damage drive trigger check. First check. Okay. Second check. Critical trigger. Oh. Shit. That gives one unit of his choice 5,000 power and the ability of an extra critical, and he's putting it all in his vanguard. So that means I'm going to take two damage from this hit, and I'm at four damage already. That means I lose. Shit. Well, better check the damage then. First check for my damage is a critical trigger. Hmm. Well, I'll add the 5,000 power to my vanguard. And that puts me at 5 damage. And second check. Oh my god. It's a heal trigger. Oh my god. Oh my god. And I'm at more damage or equal damage to my opponent. So that means I can heal a damage and give 5,000 power to my vanguard. Which keeps me at 5 damage. I don't lose. I don't lose. It's a miracle. Yes. 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 Good evening, YouTube, and welcome to the Blue Corner in this episode of How to Vanguard. I'm going to be talking about the part of the game that has basically made Card by Vanguard, Card by Vanguard, and that we're going to be talking about triggers. Oh boy, triggers. So, triggers are a special kind of grade zero unit that you must run 16 of in your deck, no more and no less, and they... I'm not going to lie, they're an incredibly derpy mechanic, and they have been the source of much salt and frustration in players, myself included, as these things can swing the game around if you get them off at the right time. Now, what does a trigger do? A trigger is a unit that has an effect that activates when you reveal it for your drive or damage check, which is something that I explained in previous videos that happens when your vanguard battles. For example here, Say I am attacking with my grade 3 Blue Flight Dragon, Transgore Dragon, which involves me checking the top two cards in my deck. The first check? Okay, nothing impressive. The second check? Critical trigger. Well, now the fun begins. When a trigger is revealed, two things will happen. Number one, the effect of the trigger, as shown here in the corner, is applied to any unit that you control. Then you add an additional 5,000 power to any unit that you want. In this case, I'm going to put the tri critical damage on my Vanguard and the 5,000 power to my Rear Guard Transport Dragon. So then I get the effect of the critical, and then I get 5,000 more power on my Rear Guard Swing. Likewise, if my Vanguard is being attacked and I take damage, then I can check the top card of my deck and see if I get anything. So I took a hit. Oh, crap. Check the top card. Oh, it's a critical trigger. I'll add the effect to my Vanguard and plus 5,000 power, making him a 16,000 for the turn. Now my opponent has to swing on my Vanguard with a line that is equal to 16,000 or higher in order to do damage to me. So, that being said, as far as the kind of triggers that are available in the game, I'm going to go over each one of them individually and just give you guys my thoughts on some other stuff in regards to triggers. So, as I already mentioned, triggers, you run 16 of them, and they have these neat little symbols in the corner here. They stand for heal, critical, stand, and draw. And I'm going to go over the draw trigger first. And that is, it's pretty simple really. You check this thing, you draw a card, and then you add the power. It's the weakest of all the triggers, as you may have noticed. They all have shield unit power on the side here. The first three triggers, Stand, Critical, and Heal, have a 10,000 shield, and the Draw Trigger has a 5,000 shield. So, defensively, it's not that great. But at the same time, it gets you one card deeper into your deck, which for compotastic things like Eradicators is really good. 
most decks will run maybe around four at the most. Others like that want to draw into things will run more around six. The ratio of these is up to you, but I do recommend at least four on the deck, as just getting to your grade threes faster is always a good thing. Next up, the critical trigger. And one of the two biggest sources of salt in the game. I'm not going to lie. A critical trigger just basically adds one more damage to your attack. So say my vanguard is attacking and he's going to deal one damage if he hits. Factor in the critical trigger and he's now going to be doing two damage. And God help you if two critical triggers go off then you're going to be doing three extra damage to your opponent therefore halfway killing them. Next up, the heal trigger. This one is unique in the fact that you can only run four heal triggers in a deck. Unlike the other ones where you can run six, eight, sixteen if you wish in a deck, heals you can only run four of and that's because they're the most powerful of all triggers. When you reveal a heal trigger and you have equal damage or more damage than your opponent, you get to take one of your damage and put it into the drop zone giving you basically another turn to live or another attack to take. They're not so great early game, but late game these things are devastating, especially if you hit multiples off of what would be a game winning shot, then it just really sets your opponent back a bit. Now, heal triggers are probably the most disgusting of the triggers. I mean, critical triggers are ridiculous and all that. They can close all games really fast. But heal triggers can just let someone who probably should be dead get back in and then proceed to critical trigger you on the following turn. Then the last trigger I'm going to talk about is the stand trigger, one that sees almost no play outside of a few decks. Stand triggers, simply put, when revealed allow you to stand up one of your rear guards that has already attacked and let it attack again. It's okay. Some decks benefit from being able to stand again. Nova Grapplers and Aqua Force most notably as they have effects that benefit from either multiple attacks or just being able to stand again. Like Aqua Force have monsters that plus if they are the X battle or more of the turn and a stand trigger allows you to get that X battle or more. And Nova Grapplers have units that when you stand this it gets this effect and if this unit stands and you can stand this unit as well and that that deck is all about multiple stands in a turn but in other decks like liberators and eradicators it's just simply not as good the additional critical triggers or the additional draw triggers are just better but it's still a 10k shield which is something to consider over that of the draw trigger which is 5000 shield but Rarely you're going to see someone who will play stand triggers over draws and criticals, with the exception of the two decks I mentioned already. That being said, as far as ratios are concerned when it comes to triggers, more often than not you're going to be seeing around the lines of 8 criticals, 4 draws, and 4 heal, giving you 16 total triggers. Really aggressive decks will run instead 12 criticals and then 4 heals and then the ones that just love the YOLO will go a full 16 criticals if their clan has that many. Most clans at this point do have more than one line of critical triggers. In fact I'm pretty certain Kagero have 4 at this point. I know Naru's have 3. No they have, no never mind. Naros have actually four different criticals as well. Two sets of Narukami triggers and two sets of Eradicator triggers. And then we're going to be getting Brawler triggers coming up in the next set too. So, yeah, there's a lot of triggers that you can uh, use in your deck. It's just that, again, you can only run at most four heals, which would be, which is good because ugh, the amount of time that it would take to complete a Vanguard game if you could only run heal triggers, they would go on forever unless you know that would be yeah they would just go on forever so now that we have a better idea of what triggers do let's talk a little bit of strategy of them and just basically that you need to keep them in the back of your mind when you're playing the game as you're going to see them either every turn or every other turn especially when you see great threes in action then they're going to get two checks and there's more you basically get double the chances of hitting a trigger and you kind of have to attack and defend appropriately when you're attacking, if you hit a trigger, you may want to put 
all the effects on the Vanguard immediately, but what if your opponent decides to not guard anyway? Well, the 5,000 power is a waste on your Vanguard because you're already going to be hitting, so put it on the rear guard so that you're guaranteed to force more card advantage out of your opponent because if they don't want to take an extra damage, then they have to guard it. And likewise, when you are being attacked by your opponent, how much you defend depends on whether or not you want to worry about them getting through you with triggers. Like, if you don't want to take the damage at all, then you're going to have to guard it. And say my opponent's coming at me for 18,000, and I do not want to take the hit because I'm at 5 damage. Well, a 5,000 shield is not going to be enough, so I'm going to throw down a 10,000 shield, which puts me at 21,000. That's good, right? Yes, but no. Because triggers are a thing, my opponent might hit one off of their twin drive, putting them at to 23,000, and that would be enough to hit over this and then kill me in my lose the game. So instead, I'd have to throw down an additional shield just in case. A 10,000, a 5,000 shield puts me at 26,000, meaning my opponent will not hit me even if they do check one trigger. They would need two triggers to pass, or the two to pass, as it's mostly called. Now, the two to pass doesn't happen nearly as often as you'd think. And the chances of them hitting two triggers as opposed to one trigger off their drive check, it, it's there, but it's not as frequent. So the two to pass scenario is a safe play most of the time. However, if you just do not want to take that chance at all, then you just throw down two tens. Putting yourself at 31,000, meaning your opponent, even if they hit two triggers, will not hit you. This is the no pass. However, you have to take other things into consideration like break rise and such, and you might have to throw down even more shield. But guarding appropriately by taking your opponent's potential triggers into account is one of the important things of this game. One way to keep that in mind is keep uh, just check on your opponent's drop zone for any triggers they may have in there. And also keep pay attention to what they damage check and what they drive check. You are only allowed to run 16 triggers in a deck, and most people will run no more than eight of a certain type of trigger. So, if you see seven critical triggers in your opponent's drop zone, and it's late game, then you can afford to say, "Well, I'm at four damage. Sure, I'll take the hit. What are the chances of you hitting that trigger anyway?" Now, you could be up against that guy who just proceeds to rip the one trigger they have left in the deck off the top, but more often than not, though, it, it's probably not going to happen. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this segment of How to Vanguard, and this concludes basic, the basic stuff, really. Next, I can start going a little more in-depth on things such as magic numbers, and I'm also going to talk about the Legion mechanic and my thoughts on it, but that being said... Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any questions about Vanguard gameplay you want me to talk about, by all means, post them and I'll cover them in future segments. Until then, this is Blue Star 899, jacking out.